Good morning, Katie Couric. How are you doing? You have a big smile on your face, so you must be feeling good. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm feeling like everybody else. And yeah. Brian, your hair is so long. Yes, Katie. <laughs> I, I have, you know, I have not been to the beauty salon. <laughs> I have never grown it out quite like this. The, uh, the, the lockdown has inspired it to just grow. And so I didn't realize it was wavy. And Sissini and Tanya, lucky. they tell you me I have to keep it. You got it. You got a nice head of hair there, Ryan. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Let's get into some business here. So you have been uh, in the broadcast world for for a minute and you've seen all kinds of <laughs> all kinds of different stories and you've covered all kinds of things uh the highs the lows the good the bad how how do you how do you view the time we're in now how do you put it into perspective i would say unprecedented ryan is the word i mean i'm 63 i have never experienced anything like this i think this confluence of events not only global pandemic you have a huge social justice movement, the likes of which we've never seen, long and extended and expanding all the time. And then you have an unconventional president uh, with very unconventional leadership qualities. So I think it's sort of the perfect storm or the imperfect storm of all these factors coming together. And it's just, I mean, I think it's testing us. And not to mention, disproportionate number of people of color being affected by this pandemic, not to mention the economic hardship millions upon millions of Americans are going through. The fact that American exceptionalism is not at all exceptional when it comes to how this pandemic is being dealt with. Uh, so sort of uh, in such a fractured way with states doing different things, uh, a lack of leadership from the federal government, uh, a, a disbelief in science. I mean, you can go on and on and on, but it's a whole, I think, panoply of forces coming together that really is making this a, a very, um, as I said, unprecedented time. I know you're speaking with uh, leaders in their class, business leaders, uh, you know, best in class type people, right? On your podcast. And I'm right. curious to know what is the through line that you're hearing from them in all different walks of industries in life? Well, I think that most people are saying that, you know, this will be, this is the time of transformational change and that we're not going to go back to normal, even when there is a vaccine. Uh, which hopefully will be soon, even with different leadership, if that happens in November. I think we have been, you know, something essential has changed in us, how we're living our lives, how we're spending our time, how we're thinking about, uh, you know, our purpose, why we're here. I think this pandemic has caused people to ask some really existential questions, not only of themselves, but of society. So whether you're talking about Brian Chesky, talking about travel and Airbnb and this need for community and how he's had to switch gears, or, you know, we'll be interviewing uh, Bob Iger in the future. We interviewed Stacey Abrams about voter fraud, which really doesn't happen, and about voter suppression. And can we have free and fair elections in November? I just think that this has caused everybody, and I'd love to hear what you think too, Ryan, to take a step back and kind of reevaluate not only our values, but our priorities and, you know, how we can make the world a better place on every level. I mean, what do you think, Ryan? Well, I think, that, you know, what, what you said, we've, we've taken um, a look at our, our inner organs and qualities and values and priorities. And we've lived in a world where it was fast paced. It was velocity. It was high tech. And I think that we're, we're being forced to look at some basic fundamentals of, of ourselves and our, our value system. And we've been talking a lot about that. We, we talk about you know, here that you know, the, the, the crisis inspires innovation. You know? And if you look back at history, True. The, the, the real big you know, domestic or international challenges that the world faces, it, it, it forces great thinkers into new thinking and us into mm -hmm. pivoting into new ways of life and paradigm shifting. And, and that may be some of the silver lining that comes out of this. You hope so. You, know, you hear about the climate change and 2020 is sort of the do or die year for, for global warming and climate change. And 
you know, you want it, you see these pictures of, you know, the, the canals in Venice full of fish and, you know, the air much cleaner and, and sea life and wildlife yeah. coming yeah. up and you see, wow, this is what, this is what happens when we recalibrate or rethink, uh, you know, energy. And so, you know, I, I hope my, I hope and pray that this will provide an opportunity for us to fundamentally change the way we operate and that it won't go back to the way it was that we're going to use this opportunity to say, this is the kind of world we want to create. And honestly, I look at young people and think, this is what they're doing. They're not going to let us go back to the old way of thinking or the old way of doing things. I just don't think they're going to allow it. And that gives me so much optimism. I agree. I'm never going back to the studio. So I heart take that. Like, we're never <laughs> we're never coming into the office uh, after all this. We got the Do microphones. It, no, I don't miss it. No, I don't miss it. I, I get to see them on the screen. We talk all day about our lives. I don't miss that component of it. I do miss you know, circulating socially at my friends and, you know, going to restaurants, things like that. But mm -hmm. I, I totally fine to do this from my closet for the next 10 years. Totally fine <laughs> with that. Uh, you know, Katie, it's going to be so interesting how, how cities are transformed, you guys, and are people going to move to smaller towns? I mean, it has such extraordinary effects on almost every aspect of our lives. What will the modern day workplace look like? I'm developing a series right now called The Future mm -hmm. Of, where we're looking at entertainment, we're looking at cities, we're looking at workspaces, we're looking at offices, we're looking at you know, every aspect of you know, sports, professional sports. I mean, we're all struggling and you know, it is a real challenge and, and a real, uh, I think it's, it's very difficult for a lot of these you know, like for professional sports, Ryan, can you imagine? I mean, Rob Manfred's a friend of mine. He is the the commissioner of baseball. And I mean, the headaches and the kinds of things they're dealing with yeah, is we're, just <laughs> extraordinary. We're, we're talking about uh, putting our, uh, I think we have to pay to the, the the Dodger organization, but putting our faces in the stands as cutouts at Dodger Stadium. I mean, we, that, we, may, <laughs> just, we may just be in the stands all season. Uh, all right, I'm just going to mention a couple things and let you run, but our podcast, Next Question with Katie Couric and Back to Biz with Katie and Bose, available on iHeartRadio. And uh, some fun news, later today, you'll be hosting on Instagram Live, the Parent Trap Reunion, right? Well, it's actually, it's on my regular Instagram grid. Nancy Myers and I, who you must know, Ryan, yes, who I, I love, love Nancy. you know, oh it's a great I'm, I'm director. Such a fan of, I'm such a fan of her work. I did, yeah, I did, uh, you know, something's got to give and it's complicated oh, yes. and the parent trap. Anyway, Nancy and I did an oh. IG live at the beginning of the pandemic and Lindsay Lohan popped in and we we're like, hey, let's all get, to, let's get the gang back together as so if good. I'm part of the gang. I'm not. <laughs> but I said, let's get everybody get back together. So I moderated this really, really fun parent trap reunion we're pushing it out on the 22nd anniversary you know it's it was such a seminal movie for so many people it was Lindsay Lohan's you know big screen debut and it was so much fun so everyone uh check out my Instagram page and you'll see you'll see it and my one of my favorite movies of all time is It's Complicated. I can watch that every <laughs> week. It's so good. So thank you. You Nancy. just like when Alec Baldwin, you when Alec Baldwin was caught uh, in, uh, <laughs> yeah, in, yeah, yeah, uh, on his idea. computer screen. Remember yeah, that? One of my, <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite <laughs> scenes. Um, all right, Katie, take care of yourself. Always great to chat with you. Thanks for everything. Appreciate all it. All right, great to see you guys. Thank you. Bye, Katie. Kiss all there. of you.